Sri for that introduction and uh, thank you to the Arthur C. Clarke Trust and Nalaka for the invitation uh, to speak here. Uh, this is not my usual cup of tea. Uh, my, walk, my work involves the here and the now and extending in incremental disruption, if there is such a thing. Uh, sounds a bit oxymoronish. Uh, so I will actually make my best attempts at uh, future gazing. Um, I do want to start with a little bit of our collective history in, in, in framing uh, today's future gazing. And I want to start with 1983, uh, a year that all of us are familiar with, um, a blotch in our history. Um, um, and the civil rights, my understanding of it was that the households, like my parents' households, were found using um, electoral rolls. <coughs> Um, of uh, uh, from the country. That's how the houses were discovered. That's how my parents' house was burnt and we had to hide in ditches. Uh, and then I want to move into right now what we are doing, some of my colleagues, uh, Sujata is working on, is, is using aggregate electoral records as, a, as an input into a, um, a, a software platform for minority parties to try and demarcate potential boundaries for submissions to the delimiting commission in relation to the, the upcoming parliamentary election, uh, uh, provincial elections, and then hopefully even for the, the parliamentary elections. Uh, same piece of data used in different ways. Um, and how we use it is a reflection of what we negotiate as society in terms of our users. And there will be abuses, but there are users too. Um, however, as Nalaka asked me while I was very nervous thinking about what I should talk about today, he said, Arthur, you know, you should be cautiously optimistic about the future. Um, so this is my humble attempt at uh, trying to be cautiously optimistic about the future. And I will start that with a small story of a, the imagined life of a person living in 2048. Uh, unfortunately, I, which I wrote today morning while thinking about this, I'm going to read a little bit of that, and then I'll sort of come back to what those themes might be. 32-year-old um, Shazna from Generation A wakes up in Negombo and is informed via her Neuralink that the nanobots have released medication to ease the flu-like symptoms that it has detected. She considers breakfast options suggested by her personal AI called Namali. And while she craves cheese-infused sausages, Namali has chosen carrot-infused chicken sausages to give her the right vitamin C balance for the day, knowing that she will be fine with that choice so long as she has her small dark chocolate piece at the end of the meal. Shazna picks up her VR lens and has a quick conversation with her mother Aisha and Candy in full 360-degree dimensions and she notes how pleasant the clouds look as they weave through the hilltop residence of her mother's. Pikmi that day has chosen to send her a driverless zone, drone to take her directly to the meeting that she has in the morning instead of the usual terrestrial driverless cab, which would have taken her to, the, to connect to the transit MRT link to the Colombo port city. And this, is, this, this change in plans happened because of an overnight maintenance on the link had taken longer than anticipated. And while she waits, she decides to use her e-cigarette. Um, Namali had tried to keep this information from the AI for Janashakti insurance. Um, but the AI for the data regulator ruled that this information had to be shared with Janashakti insurance. Um, and while Shazna takes her first puff, Namali informs her that by using the e-cigarette that day, next week her health insurance premium would go up by 10 rupees, uh, and it had so far gone up by 20,000 rupees uh, this current year. Um, while she enjoys her puff from her e-cigarette, uh, she asks Namali to start her on a cessation program. Uh, and the, pro the Namali programs a daily morning alert to start from the following day, to inform her of how much money she has currently lost a year because of smoking and how much less she will lose if she continues with the cessation program. When the pick-me drone picks her up and she's on her way, 
To her meeting, Namali again alerts Shazna that Haran, the ports who's at uh, Haran uh, will be at the from the Port City Corporation will also be attending her meeting, and that she might want to talk to him since he has strong connections with Nalaka, who chairs the UN Committee on Climate Sustainability, because that is her area of interest. That is a short excerpt from what I sort of. Um, came up with today while thinking about what might this future look like. Uh, there are several themes there that I would like to unpack uh, in this little short story. Um, one is that I do think that artificial intelligence or uh, in whatever form or and the data that powers it will lead to greater inf efficiencies in the lives that we lead in the visible things that we see uh, from transportation services um, in, in what we eat, uh, our health, uh, our, and our interactions with our personal and professional interactions. There will be efficiencies that will be there that will manifest in how we live our lives. There will be efficiencies that we cannot see that is happening in the background. Efficiencies in how the market plays out, uh, reduction of waste in production, uh, because you have less information asymmetry, but not complete elimination. Markets we may not actually individually uh, operate in, and rather it will be happening through, through algorithms and, 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 and trading uh, platforms. Uh, but maybe we'll have some interactions there, and that will, I think, lead to better efficiencies in the economy as a whole. And immersive experiences in our communication that transcend boundaries will be possible, but will not take away our desire for physical interaction. Um, but this efficiency doesn't mean that there will not be disruption. Um, as the, you know, the story with the, the MRT link shows about, you know, things will go wrong. Um, and some people will have the ability to adapt to those disruptions. Um, and how will all of this be brought about potentially? I think it will be brought about by personalized, anthropomorphized AI personas, uh, like Namali that I described. Uh, this will potentially be the norm rather than, uh, than anything else. Um, these personalized services will, be, will know our interests, will attempt to make decisions on our behalf negotiate with other AI bots again on our behalf um, with our best interests in mind, but maybe not necessarily what we may want. Um, and, 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 and what I, I think it will touch on, you know, sort of even in terms of our media consumption with moving away from data overload to synthesize distillation of knowledge. Um, um, is how we may consume information in, 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 in the future. All that is good, but I don't think this will necessarily mean that poverty and marginalization will go away. Um, everyone won't have access to the nanobots that I described to you for, that Shazna has access to. Uh, this may not be available to everybody in, 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 uh, in, the, in the country, and poverty and marginalization and how we actually conceptualize those will maybe be different. Because of greater efficiencies in agricultural production and reduction of wastage, maybe malnutrition will no longer be there. But that doesn't mean that other forms of marginalization and poverty don't start to crop up. Things that you know we don't, may not fully comprehend right now. And not everyone will have access to these solutions to the disruptions that will inevitably happen even in this highly efficient future that we potentially have. Um, and even in our AI personas that we, I said, would be the norm, I think there will be inequity there. Uh, at the most simplest level, it might be something a little bit more smart than our Gmail's auto-response suggestions uh, that we have currently. Uh, but at its best, it will try to proactively guide us rather than be reactive uh, guidance to whatever is happening. There might and there probably will be a reorientation in how power with this in, in, in society is in terms of 
uh, not just in our interpersonal relationships, but between state citizens and corporations may look like. And I, 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 as I start to imagine that, I don't think it will reach an equilibrium state in, in, in 30 years. And while to use sort of the phrase that, you know, the arc of the future may tend towards justice, but I don't think it'll be an arc, it'll be more like a, a wave. Uh, with reaching some particular equilibrium state that is, it's, is very difficult to, to figure out right now. And what this certainly means is that privacy norms will change. Um, what we are not okay with right now, we will be okay with potentially in the future. Um, that's, I think, inevitable. While there may be certain... Um, what I may call assistance in terms of regulations or uh, like what I described in that negotiation between Namali and the data regulators, AI and uh, Janashakti Insurance, you'll have that kind of uh, uh, a negotiation on, on a real-time basis that we may not be actively involved in. And these are agents that are doing it on our behalf. Um, but to think, but to 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 emphasize the point about what how privacy norms might change, I, I would want to leave and end today's uh, uh, thoughts with again a story from the past, uh, which is actually from it was a 19 it was a, a, a small uh, police report in the New York Times um, from the early 1800s or uh, 1900s. I can't remember uh, right now. The piece was quite simple, you know, it, it was just a news report saying that two people were arrested in central New York Central Park for using this new contraption called a camera. That was early 1900s. Uh, we will not think of doing something, arresting people for the use of a camera in a public park uh, in our current day and age. And I don't know what we will be actually okay with fully in the future as well. So that is my humble attempt at a cautiously optimistic imagination of Sri Lanka in 2048. I will now leave it to you all for your imaginations. Thank you.